Yeah. There, there is that. You can target other parts of people's bodies. You can target the heart and cause heart seizures. You can target, target the lungs and cause bleeding. Uh, you can target, if you're clever enough, um, some of the essential glands in the body that control all of the hormonal systems. <laughs> so if, if you have dissidents or people that you don't like as a government, it's very, very easy these days to irradiate them and either have them wind up in jail or, or in a psychiatric hospital. And of course, there is no comeback on you. Yeah. Now, these weapons that the governments have and are still using, are they more powerful than, for example, the Wi-Fi I might have in my front room or my cordless phone or a mobile phone transmitter? No, in, in fact, they're, they're actually the power is slightly less. Less? The power is slightly less. Um, the, the difference is, <clears throat> where you might use Wi-Fi, you might go in after work and do a couple of hours and then leave, and, and the Wi-Fi is going out in all directions. Here, they are targeting you probably with a beam, and right. it is on you all day. It can follow you everywhere you go, and it can target you when you're asleep as well. So you're really getting a concentrated dose. It's a, it's a bit like um, putting the light on in your house and sitting with the light, or have somebody follow you with a searchlight and uh -huh. beaming the searchlight on you all the time. So it, it's, there is a difference between that. But in fact, the power can be less. It just takes longer. So, so I would imagine then that the devices we have in our houses nowadays are extremely dangerous. All of the, not all of the research, because there is research that has been carried out where they have failed to show it is dangerous. But we do have documentary proof yeah. from the governments, <clears throat> one specific paper uh, from the government that lists all of the illnesses that you can get from microwave sickness, including severe neurological disorders. Uh, we have a government uh, document that actually says this needs to be kept secret from the Western governments because it will affect the efficiency of the military, uh, the weapons industry, and it will also affect uh, industrial profit. We have the government telling us that this, this is technology the, is dangerous? This is the United States Defence Intelligence Agency advising the Western governments to keep this secret so that they can protect industrial profit and military f functions. Because, I mean, if you're in the military yeah. and a lot of people do start developing tumours, um, you could start suing because the equipment you're using is not safe. So yeah. to avoid that and uh, to protect the industrial profit, uh, they put this document out. <clears throat> going back a little bit to children now if we can just move away okay. from the military we'll move away from the military, from the military, military for a okay. while um, why are children more at risk are they more at risk Yeah, I, as I said earlier that, that it's always the children that, that suffer yeah. first um, a lot of people make the mistake in believing that children are small adults. And unlike medication, where you have an adult dose and a children's dose, with microwaves, there is the adult dose, but there is no known safe dose of microwave irradiation anywhere in the world published for a child. And the reason is, <clears throat> and embryos are a, a special case after this, if, if you wish to ask about embryos. Um, if we look at the average infant 
in school, for a small child in school. And I'll only concentrate on just a couple of areas of the body. Yeah. The immune system of a child, a child has soft bones, so the microwaves penetrate the bones, no trouble at all. And microwaves are attracted to water, which is most of what bone marrow is. <clears throat> The immune system of a child takes 18 years to develop. And the first thing we know from microwave irradiation is that it attacks the immune system. So with children who are not small adults, they are neurologically and physiologically immature adults. The immune system of children is being damaged before it is anywhere near up and running. The nervous system that runs through the body <clears throat> has 122 layers of protein. There's a, a system of protein synthesis that lays 122 layers around the nervous system. It takes 22 years for this to fully develop. So all through a child's development, what you have is the microwaves affecting the protein synthesis of this system. Now, goodness only knows what's going to happen. We are probably going to get an epidemic of the muscular dystrophy type diseases later on in life for these children uh, because of a damaged myelin sheath or insulating coating around their nervous systems. The other, what I think is the most serious aspect of a child's development, <coughs> excuse me, there are experiments that show the ovarian follicles in young girls. Now, unlike boys who produce sperms as and when they're required on a daily basis, young girls are born with all of the 400 eggs they are going to need to develop into fully blown eggs and children. <clears throat> now, we know that microwaves affect the ovarian follicles and can affect the ovarian eggs. We know that the microwaves, there are papers on this, can cause genetic damage. Now, if you think of a young girl at school, if you think of a young girl at school, she's sitting here, and she has the Wi-Fi set yeah. transmitting straight through the uterus into the ovaries. <clears throat> now, if the young girl damages the ovarian eggs, and we're not going to know this for another 15 years. If the ovarian eggs are damaged, these are irreparable. They can never, ever be repaired. The mitochondrial DNA in girls is irreparable. So when that girl, if she has a daughter, that daughter will carry the genetic damage that has been caused by the microwaves. And when she has a daughter, that daughter will carry the same disease and her daughter and her daughter. So we are now not saying we're risking this generation, we are risking the future generations of all of the children in the world from genetic damage. Uh, and that's a scary prospect. That's extremely, <clears throat> extremely frightening. It is, it is. So to clarify that, the eggs cannot repair the mitochondrial DNA. Nope. And so if a girl grows up with a genetic defect, she will pass it on to her daughter. Yes. And on, and on, and on, and, on, and, so on, on, and on, on, until there is no more female line left in that family. And this is surely a good enough reason to remove Wi-Fi from schools. Wi-Fi should be wiped out of schools at a stroke today. 
Why, why to are, protect all of the children. <clears throat> why are schools persisting in Wi-Fi if they know it's a, if they know it's a risk? Ignorance. It's what I call intentional ignorance. Uh, it seems that uh, government ministers that are trying to promote the telecommunications industry and governments, and it's not difficult in our country, the UK, to find a school where if every child has their own Wi-Fi that they can walk around with, when the school inspectors come in, they get extra ticks in extra boxes. Mm -hmm. And it's what I call intentional ignorance. Um, They will only look at and believe the research they want to. They they will not acknowledge most of the real research and most of the risks. Uh, And this is why I think we have this problem. There is... There is such uh, a pressure on advertising and hype to get this technology and then this technology and this technology. I can remember <clears throat> I can remember when I was a child, our king, the King of England, I can remember our king encouraging people to hold smoking parties. Uh, because it was good for you. Yeah. We, we seem to be in that situation now. People believe that if you get the latest technology, it's going to benefit the children. What they do not do, and I, I call them silly boys, <clears throat> and I'm being disrespectful. I think our Prime Minister and certainly the head of MI6 and our our secret service, and I really hope he gets to look at this, they are so young that when we were making major decisions on the dangers of this, they were wondering what their nappies were for. And they have now got into the position of power, but they, they don't have the intelligence to come back and talk to people like me and say, look, what's the truth behind this? They listen to the government advisors who are usually people brought in from the industry. Uh And they believe that the government advisors are right. And I have yet to find a government advisor to make a single sensible sentence anywhere. And, and I will defy anyone to show me an intelligent sentence from a government advisor. 